Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Mikey Pipes. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Right now, it is Friday morning, TGIF, ladies and gentlemen. It is the 24th day of February, 2023. Uh, yesterday, during our steam boiler installation that Pipe Doctor performed for a uh, new client in Elmont, which is in Valley, which is in Nassau County in uh, New York, on Long Island. Um, a relatively new hire, that, uh, his name was Nick, that I hired as a plumbing and sewer technician, because that's what he's experienced on, um, about an hour, not even an hour into the job, just disappeared. Just disappeared. He just walked up the basement stairs and we never saw Nick again. Now, at first, we thought maybe he got abducted or kidnapped. Um, maybe he conveniently happened to go to the bathroom at the right time, which was as we're taking the boiler, old boiler, out of the, uh, the homeowner's basement. Uh, but then once we realized that the boiler is outside and the boiler's on the truck is with all the, uh, the debris, we realized that we maybe needed to follow it, file an APB. An all points bulletin on Nick. I have not heard back from him since then. He didn't call. He didn't send a letter. No text. No love letters. No flowers. No cards. No nothing. And with that, he's dead to me. Dead, I tell you. He's dead. If you're that immature, all right? If you're that immature where you just walk off a job without even saying anything to anyone, well, your mama must be proud, boy. Your mama must be proud. Anyway, this morning we are going to do something we haven't done for on YouTube in a long time. Uh, actually, I've never actually done this before on a Whale McLean, but um, we're going to a, uh, a client's home. They have a Whale McLean Aqua Plus indirect water heater, and uh, we're going to do some service on it. Servicing also includes... Uh, changing the anode rod. Yep, so let me stop by the bodega get some breakfast, which is right there, and uh, get shown the road. All right, here is the Aqua Plus Whale McLean. This is the model 65, I believe. Okay, so we have an anode rod right here. We're gonna change that. We have two AP110 filters inside the stainless steel housing for the hot water um, water filter. We're gonna hook up our drain, hook up from our drain a hose and a pump, and we're gonna discharge outside. We're gonna flush this bad boy out, remove all the sediment from the bottom of the tank, change the anode rod, and uh, just do a general cleaning of the overall area. In case you're all right, let me show you guys what I got set up and let's get the show on the road. All right, I have a very large diameter washer she knows. This is a laundromat hose, right? Since we're sucking from this point with that half inch, sorry, that three quarter inch boiler drain, since I'm sucking on this line, we wanna have the largest diameter hose as possible. Right. If I'm using a regular washing machine hose, it's this. When it sucks in, it's going to want to suck in that hose as well, right? So I'm using a very large, this is called a laundry mat hose. This is full flow, three quarter, and it's designed for more water volume. Now, it's still going to want to suck it in, but it's much thicker in diameter of the circumference of it. So it's going to help us get more output. And then this charge side, just a rubber high temperature hose. So let's open up this valve. Check, check for leaks, right? Kind of like purging air out. And I got the hose draining. I'm using a 50 foot hose. I'm draining over there. And let me just move that away from this other house. I'm not putting it in the dirt or the grass. All right, I just wanna go into cement and let it get to the street, okay? So I got my garden hose set up. The pump's good. And I have the laundry mat hose for suction. All right, I'm gonna turn that on, make sure we're good. And now we're gonna isolate. So this is our domestic cold work coming in. 
that's closed. We're gonna let this suck for a little bit, pop open the relief valve, and I'm also gonna isolate hot water as well, right there. So cold water is isolated, hot water is isolated. Don't worry about anything else you see here for right now, but this is my hot water, which leaves the tank right here, comes out, bypass valve for filtration, closed, closed. We'll get anything out of there as well. Let's make sure we're draining. Let's go check. Okay, as you can see, we're draining. All right. Excellent. And while we're draining, I'm gonna start taking off the screws that are protecting the anode cap. Take those out, let's take the anode rod out. All right, I removed all the screws. Okay, there's the anode. All right, now, a bit of advice. If you have a Whale McLean or any other indirect tank, right, uh, and the tank fails, the manufacturer is going to want to see the picture of the anode. So I highly suggest you have your plumber or you change it every three years or as needed. Once you do that first three years, if it looks pretty good, maybe you can do it every four or five years, right? But if there's nothing left of it, you maybe can do it every like two and a half or two, one year, two years, you know? And uh, obviously if there's nothing left of it, you got crazy water and you better, <laughs> you better get a water filtration system. I just want to say the, these anode rods, we call them the sacrificial anode rods, right? They're magnesium in most cases, uh, rods that are inside the tank and its job is to be sacrificed, right? Uh, the water or the elements or the particles in the water is going to want to attack that rod first rather than attacking, you know, the steel tank. And that's what leads to tank failure. So if you have a, any, even if a regular water heater, if you want to extend the life of your water heater, change the anode rods on a regular basis. Facts. It'll let, it'll last you and give you a lot more life expectancy on your water heater. All right. I have a 24 inch breaker bar. I have a number 32 socket. All right. show you what this new anode rod looks like right. so here it is this is the well mclean right there bingo okay part number six three three five hundred zero one four okay this is the magnesium anode rod replacement kit for the aqua plus and it's one thick rod let me tell you there that is okay and you have a little o-ring right there so if you want you can put a little um dope there I like to use Megalock by Hercules, okay? This is not the, the Loctite, where it's gonna lock the threads into place. No, this is just Megalock, it's good stuff. Good, nice pipe, thread, sealant. But there's that rod, right? Uh, and it's one piece, it looks about 14 inches long in total uh, length, um, about maybe an inch and three quarters in diameter, so solid magnesium, it's good stuff. This is the sacrificial rod, so now that this is loosened up, Tank's almost empty. Let's see. Let's see if I can spin this out by hand. Alright, I'm really curious to see what this looks like. Because we've never changed an anode in a well plane before. And this, you gotta see this, guys. Wow. So. There it is. Take a look at that bad boy. Wow. Let's take a closer look at this. And I swear this is not a uh, adult rated film. It's not, I swear. So, take a look. Wow. All right, so now that the anode rod is out, we're gonna put it back in the uh, the box that the new one came in, and we're gonna take some water and uh, flush out the tank with some water in that tank. But before I do, I'm gonna to try to get you a little visual tour inside that tank. 
So stick around, smash that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done so already, please check out my other YouTube channel called Mikey Pipes Philanthropy, where 100% of all ad revenues, corporate sponsorships, and 2% of Pipe Doctor gross receipts uh, gets deposited into this charitable organization that I set up about a month and a half ago to give back to the community, those who can't afford plumbing and heating services, we do it for free on the house. Check it out, Mikey Pipes Philanthropy. All right, not much to see in there except it's quite foggy. <laughs> I'm sorry, <sighs> it's a little foggy in there. But as you can see, the inside of the tank has all this little part particles on it, right? And that's just calcium and other stuff and other nasty stuff in there. So we're gonna get a little hose in there and hose that out. All right, so conveniently, we do have a half inch hose spigot right there or boiler drain. And I just got a standard washing machine braided stainless steel supply. We're going to put that in there and return on that water, All right? And we're gonna try to just hose out the inside of this tank. All right, just try to rinse it off. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna keep the pump on at uh, certain certain intervals, you know, not all the time, because, you know, you don't want it to run empty. But uh, once I get a, enough water in there, I'm going to uh, turn the pump on and uh, suck that stuff out of the bottom of the tank. All right, so I've rinsed out the tank several times. My pump is still running in the background, so I apologize for the, the noise. I'm gonna take some Megalock, and I am gonna apply it to the threads of the anode run. I'm just gonna put a little bit on there. I don't need a lot, right? Um, but one of the things I did learn from the community is that uh, you shouldn't really use Teflon tape on this. Shouldn't use that because it somehow interferes with the electrical continuity. I don't get that. Oh, conductivity, sorry, of the system. Again, I don't know how it does that. I'm not a electrical engineer or a rocket scientist or a nuclear physicist, but I do know that I did have a lot, a nice, nice, not a liberal amount, but a good, a nice little coating on those threads and also hitting that O-ring a little bit. And once I put that in there, I make sure that my face is, is clean. Let me show you. I'm gonna make sure that that face is clean. And it is. If it wasn't, you may wanna take a little wire brush, make sure that that surface is clean and free of any foreign debris. So now I got my anode rod, I'm gonna put into the hole, the port, the tapping on it, and then we're gonna thread this on. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my 24 inch breaker bar and give that a nice little tight. Oh, slipped there a little bit. Slipped off there a little bit, but Make sure that's nice and tight, good and tight. All right, so at this point, I have filled up halfway and drained this tank with means of the pump about six times, a little less than uh, 55 minutes to do so. One of the things that I do now, if you're a DIYer, I suggest you probably don't do this, even though you should be testing the relief valve, you know, every six to 12 months. That's what it says in this yellow tag, right? Don't say that, test it. Um, but if you play with this and you open it, sometimes I, they don't want to go back down and you'll be stuck with a dripping relief valve. Under no circumstances are you to cap this line. Don't do that. If you do that, bad things can happen, kind of like this. <laughs> 335 PSI of pressure with no relief valve. It will take off like a rocket ship and land Probably not on your roof like that one did. It'll probably end at the next town over. Hopefully no animals were hurt during the manufacture and filming of that video. Special shout out to Mythbusters for that little clip right there. All right, um, I got to put the filter back in. Word of advice about the relief valve. This is the uh, 100XL. It's a temperature and pressure relief valve. It opens at temperature, which is 210 degrees, and at pressure, which is 150 PSI. Keep that in mind, this is a lifesaver. Just like an anode rod is the lifesaver for the tank, this is a lifesaver for your own well being. So don't tamper with it. Call a professional. All right, now that the filter's back in place, I um, opened up 
this valve and this valve and this valve remains closed. This is the bypass valve. So let's say anything should happen with this filter where it's leaking. I can close this valve, I can close this valve, and I can open this valve and restore domestic hot water to the house. This is what we call a bypass valve setup, right? When we typically install them, we normally put a drain here to relieve the pressure. It takes just a strain off this connection when you try to uh, replace that filter. So uh, we know we put a drain right there, but this is fine as well. Okay, cool. Okay. Anode covers back into place. Filters in place. No leaks. We dried everything up. Um, one thing left to do. All right, there we go. One thing left to do. There we have it. See? Stop. This unit may be covered under warranty. There's our phone number branding listing the services without being a cluster, without being like, this should not be in the back of the truck, <laughs> right? Nice, this is nice for a home. Listen, we're in the laundry room right here. Boom, right there. Stop, this unit may be covered under warranty. Pipe Doctor Home Services, 516-348-6300. If you're in the trades, you should be branding your jobs. A little stick like that isn't that expensive. You may be saying Mikey Pipes. Well, what's the definition of expensive? If I told you you can get 500 of these for like 250 bucks, would you believe me? Would you, leave, would you believe me that for $250 a month, Footbridge Media, link in the description box down below, will give you a brand new website from scratch with multiple, multiple pages, a page for each service that you do, kind of like this right here, right? No commitment, no contract, brand new website, and I get you in the yellow pages equivalent on the internet, which is called doing SEO or search engine optimization, $250 a month. They also do through Footbridge Media, Print and stickers, business cards, mass mailings, things like that, dirt cheap. Check them out, footbridgemedia.com. Link in the description box down below. And if you give them a call, tell them Mikey Pipes sent you. They'll take care of it. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you found uh, this video educational. I hope you got something out of it. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of effort for me to put these videos together. So, uh, you know, way to, to say thank you is to let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comments section down below and to really help the channel out. Uh, smash that thumbs up button to like the video and if you haven't done so already please subscribe when you're down there hitting that subscribe button check out the mikey pipes philanthropy uh youtube channel there's a link for that channel down in the description box down below i only have one video up there of a service call we did just a few days ago uh in queens in new york city uh, for a gentleman who really couldn't afford my services or any services you know not even an anti men service i just really feel bad uh, for this older gentleman, but we replaced a radiator, uh, a steam radiator, a valve on for him that's been leaking uh, for quite some time, destroying the wood on the floor. It's just not good, but on the house, because that's what we do. That's the purpose of the Mikey Pipes Philanthropy 501c3 IRS recognized charity. We're giving back to the community, a nonprofit organization. And every single one in the trade should also do the same thing. Find some time, whether it's every week, every month, once a, you know, on a weekend, every so often. Just give back to the community. Together, we can make the trades great again. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. Go home, hug your kids. Let's catch you in the next one. Be well, God bless, stay safe. If you're not calling Mikey Pipes, you're getting screwed. There you go. Let's go.